Hi there, it's Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com here with a top 10 list of cards that I'm most excited to brew around from Aether Revolt. This is an ongoing tradition at RogueDeckBuilder.com whenever a new set is spoiled or shortly thereafter. I give my top 10 list of the cards that I personally am most excited to brew around. As many of you may know, if you've watched my channel before, I am first and foremost a brewer. So for those of you who are looking for a top 10 list of the most powerful cards, this may not be the list for you. There are definitely more powerful cards that are going to impact standard and modern and other formats, but these are my personal favorites out of the set. So without further ado, let's go down the list. Coming in at number 10. Number 10 is a card that I was very critical of a kind of sister card of this. Uh, which was during Journey of Nyx, which was Athreos. Uh, Athreos had the ability of whenever a non-token creature went to the graveyard, you return it to your hand unless an opponent paid three life. So I think why I didn't like Athreos is it was in a color combination that I didn't feel was quite aggressive enough to be justifying to be playing that sort of strategy at the time being. Whereas Pia's Revolution, which is my number 10 card, I think is the perfect color for a card that wants to do this type of effect. I also think that artifacts are just as relevant or not or even more relevant for an effect like this to recur. Whereas we already have shells, especially in like modern, that have recurring themes of, of artifacts. So Pia's Revolution is going to give your option the opponent to take three damage or it's going to go back to your hand for rinse and repeat. So in standard, I like this with the implements, especially the implement of combustion. We have a lot of recurring strategies, as I said before, with artifacts in the modern format. A whole eggshell was built around this sort of thing, and this could be an enabler for those type of strategies. I think this card gets better with the more cards printed. It adds an, a nice little uh, spin to the frontier format as far as more artifacts being relevant. We already have a card called Hangerback Walker that wants to be sacrificed a lot of times or just wants to chump block to get some 1-1 one -one tokens back and we even have cards that we want to sort of protect and at least get some value out of in the in the artifact slot. So I really like this card. I think there's a lot of potential to it. On to my number nine card. Number nine was would probably be ranked higher on this list if there weren't so many people already talking about this. I am a rogue, therefore I like to go strategies that aren't well known. I like to come up with new ideas, not really repeat ideas that are out there. And this card, Inspiring Statuary, is getting a lot of, of buzz uh, in the different circles. It says non-artifact spells you cast have improvise. So this card has a, tons of potential, especially if you even go back to like legacy type uh, cards where you're using artifacts. If you have a lot of artifacts that don't generate mana, a lot of some of these in modern especially, some of these artifacts that are just used like even like Pything Needles for example can then be tapped to be used to actually cast spells. Where I really like this is in standard with the Devoid cards, especially the colorless Eldrazi spells are not artifacts. So it can get the Thought Not Seer down to just a colorless source, or the Reality Smasher down to just a colorless source, or any of the like the Emerge type cards that were just had the colorless mana in them. We have the Eldrazi Mimics, things like that could actually be cast for free or just by tapping artifacts. The Inspiring Statuary itself can be used to tap to add a colorless man or mana pool to, to cast spells. And so as far as a ramp strategy is concerned, this is pretty cool. Again, it doesn't work with other artifacts, so the colorless mana has a finite amount that it can actually do because you'll need to still make colored mana. But I think this is a very interesting card, especially the further back you go. There's got to be some busted things you can do with it, and I'm definitely looking forward to brewing this card, it's particularly having this be the focal point of upcoming brews in the future. On to my number eight. Number eight is a card that might be more wishful thinking than anything. I've always really liked the black burn is what I like to call it. We had cards in uh, the Alms of the Vein with the madness three damage or th uh, target opponent loses three life and you gain three life. 
And I've always wanted that sort of archetype to work in. We have Bump, Bump in the Night in Modern. There, it worked almost there to just do a soul black burn, mono black burn, or even black red burn now in Standard is really, really pushed uh, with Gaunti's Machinations. This card is an enchantment, which I think is very relevant because in any sort of enchantment, like Enchantress or Recurring Enchantment theme. I know that there already is a few cards that get an enchantment back from the graveyard in Standard. There's a couple white creatures, I believe, that do so. Maybe one gets an R. There's one that can sacrifice to get an enchantment, I believe. I might be wrong on this. But in as far as going back into like modern playability and other ones, there is a lot of enchantment re re recurring uh, strategies. And this one says whenever you lose a life for the first time, you get an energy, and then you can pay two energy to sacrifice Gaunti's Machinations. Each opponent loses through life. You gain life equal to a life lost this way. So this is going back to a theme that was replaced by you just gain that particular amount of life. So if it lost, loses three life, you gain three life. Uh, but because we had like Green Merchant of Asphodel and we had the uh, cards out of the Orzov Guild, uh, I can't think of the mechanic off the top of my head, that gain life equal to amount of life lost. In Commander, that was just a lot of life gain, and they figured that it was that it was giving too much advantage to these type of cards, and cards like Zulaport Cutthroat no longer did that. So it's kind of cool that the Mastinations is going back to this. You're gonna So say you have four opponents, you'll gain 12 life. If you have three opponents, nine life, and so forth. But I, even in one-on-one, -on -one, this seems like a very... One mana for three damage, three life is an incredibly... And now we have two of those in the standard format. Now Alms does get a lot worse with the Smuggler's Copter uh, banning as it was one of the premier ways to discard it and get the, the cheaper discounted price to lose through life and gain through life, but I still think that even two of them in the same format, in the same standard format, might be enough to make this viable because that's a lot of life loss and a lot of life gain. It's a six point swing and you, there's even other cards that kind of have these draining type effects right now in the standard format. We saw some ally strategies like Zulaport Cutthroat and a few of the, the vampire allies that drained your opponent. And then we have even the Rogue, the Night Market Lookout that kind of does that drain effect as well. So I really like the, the Gaunti's Machinations. I don't think it's very hard to gain two energy, even a deck that doesn't have a way to gain energy. And an Enchantment of the Graveyard could help out with Delirium type strategies, even though I don't know if Delirium wants a particular card like this. On to my number seven. Number seven is a card that probably should rank higher because the more I look at it, the more I love it. This card is Lifecraft Awakening. X and a green. Instant speed. I think that's incredibly relevant. Put X11 counters on target artifact you control. If it isn't a creature or vehicle, it becomes a 0-0 construct artifact creature. So this card is super cool end of turn to even like a prophetic prism to animate it, but where I like this is it does have the versatility to be put on creatures. So think Hangerback Walker here. If Smuggler's Copter was still in the format, that would have been a beautiful target to pump up your Smuggler's Copter and then have those those counters stick around. Where I'm really liking this is like Blink Moth or Ink Moth Nexus. This is both of those uh, cards want counters and they of course stick around. Arcbound Ravager. It might give Breathe, breathe some life, pun intended, into green being an artifact color. Traditionally, green is usually the probably the least thought of color that works with artifacts. It's supposed to be like a natural type color, so there's a lot of ways to destroy artifacts, but not a lot of ways to enable artifacts. And so with this set with Lifecraft Awakening, this is a pretty sweet ability. I think Hardened Scale is even here, but you'd have to go all in on artifacts, which actually might not be too much of a stretch with the amount of constructs that use uh, plus one plus one counters, especially the hanger back walker. And we even had a few of them spoiled in this set. I believe there is the, the there's a walking, was it Ballista? I think is what it's called. It wants plus one plus one counters on it. Then you can remove a plus one counter to do a damage to a, a creature or player. So there's a ton of synergy with this card. And with the more cards printed, the better it becomes. And it's not even bad to put on a vehicle. You don't have to make it permanent animated target for the, the counters to stick around. Uh, so Darksteel Citadel is another card that I think this is really cool, or even Darksteel Ignit, uh, to put an indestructible and actually have it be a, a creature. So just some food for thought with this awesome, awesome card. If you ever played from Hell from Beyond clear back in the day, 
The health and beyond type effects instant speed were quite good. They scaled well. Uh, usually there's better ways just to individually pump something like plus three plus three or plus five plus five. We still have larger than life. But I think the key is these, these counters stick around. On to my number six. I wanted to avoid the revolt mechanic just because I thought it was most of the cards that were picking right off the bat were a little too spiky for me, and revolt was a real spike mechanic, especially with the fetch lands. Revolt's going to be a little bit tougher to enable in standard, but in uh, frontier forward or frontier back, we have the fetch lands that really enable revolt. So this is the only revolt card they ended up uh, settling on, which is aid from the cowl. Aid from the cowl is a five mana enchantment. And it says, the beginning of your end step, if a permanent control left the battlefield, you, you reveal the top card of your library. If it's a permanent card, you put it on the battlefield. Otherwise, you may put it, put it on the bottom of your library. I think that is very relevant. It says you may put it on the bottom of your library, so you can keep it on top if you want it. Uh, so if it ends up being a spell, that, like an Eldritch Evolution, for example, which will, which will enable your aid for the next turn, you can still keep it on top. And if it's a permanent card, it gets cheated into play. Now, this only ha happens at the beginning of your end step. You can actually enable it on your turn by sacrificing something. And I just really like the sacrifice. If you've watched my channel before, green and black are probably my favorite color combination. And mainly because there's a lot of like morbid type effects that, that work off, you know, synergizing and sacrificing creatures. I really, Eldritch Evolution is one of my favorite cards that's still in standard. Evolutionary Leap is one of my favorite cards from the Origins time period, and I think Aid from the Cow works really well with those type of cards. Even though, yeah, it's, it's just a permanent, so you can sacrifice tokens quite easily. You can even sacrifice clue tokens for to get some value off of this. So they even think Tireless Tracker with this card. I think there's some, some amazing synergies. The 5 mana is a bit iffy, but I think if a card has 5 mana in it, it needs to have some sort of effect immediately and I think there's a lot of ways to enable that immediately in the standard format They have a lot of free sacking we do get two free sack outlets uh, some Nantuko Husk wannabes with uh, some of the Aetherborns I believe both of them are Aetherborns so I think both of those can enable an aid from the cow uh, but I think they're it's just clue tokens in general are great ways to enable from then on out so tireless tracker is what I'm looking at with this card on to my number five Number five is a pretty duh card. I it probably would be higher up on my list if it wasn't legendary. And again, more people weren't talking about it. And this is SRAM, Senior Edificer. Legendary creature, Dwarf Advisor. When you cast an R equipment or vehicle, draw a card. Huge synergies with this card. I think that being a legendary is kind of... It balances it, though, because if you have multiples of this out, of course, you can just go crazy. But we all know the power of Pure Steel Paladin. And this is a Pure Steel Paladin that can actually be splashed in other um, type of archetypes, like especially auras. So in I don't quite know if Bogles wants this card, but even in a standard, we could try to go for a standard aura uh, list. There are plenty of them that I think are, are pretty decent, especially even in red. We're starting to get a lot of red auras. We have the Menace one from... Uh, last set, the plus two plus one in Menace that's pretty good if then you draw a card on top of it. We have a the one that enables a vehicle, uh, which is an aura and vehicle, so this, this card plays double duty with it. I think that this has just a lot of power, a lot of synergies, and is the perfect flavor uh, card, being a two drop, a two two. Everything about it is just really cool. I already have a place for it. If you look back at a few video deck techs ago, I added the SRAM Senior Edificer to a, a basically a red-white equipment deck that did have Smuggler's Copter in it, but I think we can now replace Smuggler's Copter with even more uh, equipments or, or whatnot. On to my number four. My number four is a card that I'm super excited back talking about the sacrifice type ability is Treasure Keeper. Treasure Keeper is a 3-3 artifact creature. When it dies, reveal the cards from the top of your library until you reveal a non-land card with converted mana cost three or less. You may cast that card without paying its mana cost. Put all revealed cards not cast this way on the bottom of your library. So it's Cascade on Dying. And we all know how powerful that type of effect is. Of course, that you still have to figure a way how to kill this. It is it four? Uh, then you get a three. But I think that it trades really well. It really reminds me of Matter Reshaper. And where I really like this is with Emerge, 
or with Eldritch Evolution. So we have the four mana that re which greatly reduces the cost of the Elder Deep Feed. Elder Deep Feed has not seen its day in the sun for quite some time, which is insane for such a powerful card. I think Elder Deep Feed with the banning of Smuggler's Copter and Reflector Mage and Emrakul, Elder Deep Feed's power level just can goes way up. We could be going back to the good old days, well, some people hated it, of course, to the T-Merge strategy with Ishkana and Elder Deep Fiend, and Treasure Keeper is definitely a card to consider because it is a little bit random what you can hit off that 3-drop, but that could even be a Ruinous Path, a Murder, it could be another, a Tyler's Tracker you could hit off the Treasure Keeper. So Elder's Evolution, for example, what I really like with this combo is to go get Brood Monitor, and maybe you could even hit the Eldrazi Displacer off of the... Uh, the, the Cascade off the Treasure Keeper, and there you go, you have the combo right there. <laughs> and it's because all you need with Brood Monitor is, is, is the Displacer, and you have Infinite Flickers, so if you have a card like Zulipor Cutthroat out or anything else that, that gets any um, something off of creatures dying, then it will be infinite amount of times that happens. So I really like this card, I'm not quite sure it can be pushed enough to be playable, because 4 is right there. 3, of course, would only get a 2, converted mana cost 2 or less. Uh, but so adding more mana to this makes the, the you know, cascade effect probably better. Uh, but Mattery Shaper saw plenty of plenty of play. The Filgree Familiar sees plenty of play. All those type of shells I think make for a good Eldritch Evolution type emerge strategy. On to the number three. Number three is my obligatory uh, Popper pick, and I always pick a rogue for this because I really want Popper rogues to work. And this might be the one that does it. This is 4th Bridge Prowler. It is a human rogue. 1 mana for a 1-1. One, one. When 4th Bridge Prowler enters the battlefield, it may have target creature get minus 1, minus 1 until in a turn. That is huge on curve. That will kill a Toolcraft Exemplar. That will kill a Selfless Spirit. That will kill a Rattle Chains. That will kill opposing... Uh, what are some posing 1-drop 1-1s uh, one, that are going to be a big deal? in the format now, but it's, it's, it might replace my Night Market Lookout in my Green Black Tokens, as I don't really have a use for Night Market Lookout without the Smuggler's Copter. It still works good with Crypt with Right, but I think the, the Fourth Bridge Prowler is just much better. It takes out an early, uh, if, oh, Veteran Motorist, there's another one that kills, which uh, I still think vehicles are fine. They get a nice 3-5 Lifelinker to replace the Smuggler's Copter, as well as the Heart of Quran. The Heart of Quran can easily be uh, crewed with most of the cards out of red white vehicles. DePaul accrues it, the Toolcraft Exemplar can crew it once its, its activation trigger happens, and the Veteran Motors can also crew it. So Heart of Crun is, an, is a, a no-brainer uh, replacement, I believe, for the Smuggler's Copter. Not nearly as good, but it's, it's, it's almost on power level with it. And those cards can be very key of taking care of, and I think this Fourth Bridge Prowler is the perfect card for those early motorists and, and inspectors. So, Popper, it's even bigger. It takes care of Delvers. It takes care of a lot of the fairies that are problems, like the fairy miscreants, and uh, what's in the, the, the Delver, the good old just Delver uh, ninja uh, type deck. It, I, I believe it takes care of a bunch of them. In Goblins, it takes care of a ton of Goblins. I think that Mono Black Control will want this card, and I, it could easily... Yeah, it's just because it does everything. It just, it's, it's something you can get back with those type of recursion strategies and rinse and repeat. And Popper is all about little little gains here and there. That's what makes Delver so good is it just can keep up with a card advantage. So I really like this card. I think it's both standard playable, Popper playable. It could even surprise me. It could go in uh, some frontier modern based strategies because it's a bird killer. It's a noble hire killer. Uh, it's even a glistener elf killer. There's plenty of things that... The, this enter the battlefield trigger actually kills in the and it sticks around too. We have some of these type of things when they die, it gets negative one, negative one. This you it right when it comes into play, you may have a creature get negative one, negative one. On to my number two. Number two is Rishkar Pima Renegade. Hopefully, I'm saying that name correctly. A legendary creature, Elf Druid. It is a three mana for a two two. This card is super spicy. When Rishka enters the battlefield, put a plus one blizzard counter on each of up to two creatures. Each creature you control uh, with a counter on it, it just says any counter, so there's actually like indestructibility counters and things like that that every now and again might be useful, uh, has tap, add green to your mana pool. Insanely 
cool. I really, 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 really like this card. I have an elf tribal deck that will probably, it doesn't really use a lot of plus one plus counters on it, but I actually do have a green and blue uh, plus one plus counters commander deck that absolutely will love this card because it will turn all of my creatures into mana dorks. And one of the things about that deck is it's, it's very, very mana hungry. And so uh, I could definitely replace a lot of the, the cards that I just put in there. Well, probably not. I still want them in there, but this gives me more options for all of my creatures to turn into basically land or elves. And if you have ways to put plus one plus one counters on all creatures you control, they get the ability to tap to add for green. Speaking of which, this card goes in my pet deck. The most successful deck I had in the standard season before the Aetherwork Marvel decks really got big was the green black tokens and one of the key cards in green black tokens was Nissa. Nissa putting plus one plus one counters on creatures. So with Rishkar, Nissa is huge. It will give all of my servos the ability to tap for green mana, which is what the Crypto Thrite is trying to do. So is Crypto Thrite replaceable? Possibly. The thing is once Rishkar dies though, that ability goes away. And that's why I like the, the Crypto Thrite a bit more. But I, this will be another enabler to get the the uh, Westville Abbey out quickly as it will be able to, to have all the tokens that I'm just going to sack anyway be able to tap for the mana for the Westville Abbey. So another cool thing about Rishkar though is you can put a counter on Rishkar and Rishkar can tap for mana. So this is a 3-3 three, three for 3 and it will pump up your 2-drop like your Sylvan Advocate for example to a 3-4 or your Duskwatch Recruiter to a 3-4 or any of your 1-drops that you played uh, beforehand uh, up up a notch. So really, really, really like this card. It is a druid. I've always wanted a druid tribal deck to work. Maybe this is powerful enough for modern. Who knows? But it's it's definitely a spicy card. It hits all of the formats. Uh, at least at least all of them can. I don't know about, of course, legacy. That's very very few and far between. But modern, I think this is on power level. Hardened scales type decks might want it. Uh, Commander, this is going to be a staple in so many decks, and Standard's going to love this card, and Frontier especially. Frontier Hardened Scales is going to love a card like this. There are a lot of cards that I also did not uh, put in my top 10 list that really interact very well with this card. On to the number one. Speaking of cards that interact well with Rishkar, this card is just super spicy. Absolutely love it. It's a, it's a Metallic Mimic. 2 mana for a 2-1, enters the battlefield, you choose a creature type, it becomes a creature, uh, that creature type in addition to its other types. Each creature you control with the chosen type enters the battlefield with an additional plus one, plus one counter on it. There is a pet deck that I'm working on in Frontier with constructs, because Hangerback Walker is a construct. Uh, you can actually name Thopters on this too, and that wouldn't be uh, too bad, because it... it, it, it triggers the enter the uh, the battlefield so when the thopters enter the battlefield they'll be they'll become two twos have a permanent plus one plus one counter which is super super relevant because if you kill the metallic mimic then it is it's uh those plus one plus one counters stick around so a lot of the lord type decks you take care of the lord and well the, the lord has a static effect that means that creatures that came out before it get pumped this is creatures coming out after it get pumped and stay pumped even after it is killed. So I love this ability. Plus one plus one counters are very relevant. I've, I've talked, I have a number of EDH decks that run plus one plus one counter strategies. Uh, Mar Mar Marquesa, uh, then Momer Vig, I have a counter based deck that runs it. Animar, Animar with this type of deck, at least it, you can name the element elementals and then Animar will, will come into play and this is a 2-drop into a 3-drop Animar, so Animar will come in with a plus one one counter, which is what you want it to start uh, going out of uh, out of hand. And this super, super spicy Hardened Scales decks, of course, are going to love this. Hardened Scale Tribal? That's not too far off with two elves now that have these plus one plus one counter type abilities to it. And so, again, speaking of like Construct Tribal, there's even Goblin... Coblin Tribal, Think, imagine that. Your Hordling Outburst now enters the battlefield with a bunch of 2-2s two rather than 1-1s. One and they'll stick around. You kill the Metallic Mimic, they'll stick around. Insane value. Love this card. It's easy to splash in a bazillion things. I, I This is easily my favorite card. Easily the most spicy. Easily the most synerg synergistic. So that's my top 10 list. I hope you enjoyed this list. I'm looking forward to your top 10 list. Again, these are cards that I personally found 
to be spicy. My favorite cards that I want to brew around immediately. There, of course, are more powerful cards that will hit the standard play a lot quicker or modern. There's a lot of like these cards that people are already talking about with infinite combos and the new polymorph to go get Emrakul out of modern quite easily. So you can play like a, a basically a, just a tokens based deck with no creatures or artifacts in it and you can guarantee to hit your own Emrakul. There's a lot of things out of the set that, that seem pretty busted. Uh, but as far as synergies, which I consider myself a synergy rather than a combo player, uh, this top 10 list was just full of juicy, juicy cards that I can't wait to uh, wrap my hands around. Anyway, I would appreciate your comments in the comment section below. What is your top 10 list? This has been Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com. Thanks for watching. I hope you're as excited as I am to start brewing with Aether Revolt. Remember, if you're a patron, come over to the patron page by clicking on the link to the left. There I have a poll up for patrons to vote on their favorite card from this list that I'll do my first brew with. Hope to see you there.